rides better between you with the, with the horses? Mr. I, I think Vince was the best of the bunch. Well, who do you think was the best of the bunch? Um, I don't know. You were pretty good. You were pretty good. I, I think could act like I could ride. <laughs> Vince, and well, one time he took off. I was like, oh, he. Yeah, he did pretty good. He could ride for real. And Martin, who who yeah. plays Red Harvest, was riding bareback, and that's yeah. that's tough to do. And he was riding a really temperamental, big, beautiful horse, uh, and and the thing bucked him off a couple times, but he got right back on. I think everybody did pretty. I think everybody did pretty well. I mean, the truth of the matter is, our stunt team, those are some truly magnificent yeah. cowboys, and so seeing them ride was 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 really cool. And. Uh, and we were what we were on those horses sometimes eight ten hours a day you know yeah. just so you get you you know you just take your own horse off and you start getting better and better horse gets yeah. to know you get to know your horse. Uh, was there a moment when uh, the young Chris pra the young and wonderful Chris Pratt uh, saw the master Denzel I'll be Washington quiet. and oh, no. the <laughs> well for me yes it, was you. there a moment where you uh, saw him and uh, realized. So good. Oh, and what was this? Which yeah. was this moment? If, if, and for for you, Mr. Washington, the same with with Chris. Uh, was there a moment when you saw Chris and you you thought this, this new kid Chris is very I, good? I knew he was a good man. I know he's a good man. So that that was the, the important thing for me. Some of the conversations we've had, the things we've talked about. I was like, okay, this is a good. This is a good man. He don't, he, don't, he don't even know what's going on yet. He's like, what? <laughs> it, I, it, what you know, you, 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 it's easy to lose that, become cynical. And he's not a punk. At the same time, he's not a pushover. He's a man. He's a grown man and he's his own man. So you, you respect that and you admire that. And, and sometimes you knock things over and <laughs> just pick them up. <laughs> no, I'm serious. No, I'm serious. He knows what's going on. Yeah, we had some, we had, a, we had a lot, we had a lot of really great moments on this film. Just connecting as human beings, I think, I think hopefully that reads on screen. But for us, you know, that that's that's the beauty of, of being able to do what we do. And uh, yeah, it's like you meet somebody that's, you know, uh, the two, act, two actors I work with that I, read, I I could see. First time I saw it was when I worked with Tom Hanks, and the second time I saw it when I worked with Chris. I said, okay, wow. I see why people love them, because they're genuine. The camera will catch you lying. All the camera does is tell, is tell the truth. And if you're lying, it's easy. And it, some guys carry their own lights. Tom Hanks carries his own lights. And Chris carries his own lights. Chris. So I mean that. I'm not saying that. Just, you know, I'm not. That's, it is man that, that's uh that's pretty amazing thank you very much uh, gentlemen <laughs> antoine uh, you can be very specific because this site uh, is very cinephile uh, can you describe to me and to our uh, viewers uh, the style and the ideas about uh, lens about uh, uh, directing this this specific kind of wonderful western that you made. You can be very specific. Okay, I will do that. Um, well, I shot it on film. The reason I shot it on film is because I think film has a soul. It has a texture that's beautiful. And uh, I don't think filmmakers should give it up because it's another paintbrush. And in a western, there's nothing to hide behind. You, you're out there. If you shot it on digital, it's going to be bright and flat and no depth. It's just, ugh, I don't know what to do with that. Then it's not a Western to me. With film, you see the sweat. Yeah. You see the dirt. So I shot it on film for that reason. Uh, most of the lenses I used were 35 millimeters because that's the human eye, roughly around 35 millimeter. Uh, when I dealt with all the coverage and things like that. And every once in a while, I'd use maybe the longest, was like a 50 maybe. Um, I use a 18 wider lenses just for the big landscapes. I really wanted to fill the space. I really wanted you to fill the sky. And, and remember that it represents freedom. 
which is what the, what's being taken away from the people. Uh, I, w I would move the camera to tell a story constantly. Once they came into the town, the camera was behind them more because it was they were being stalked by Bogue. So his presence was always there, even though he wasn't there. Yeah. So, uh, but I didn't do anything uh, fancy, like for an example, I didn't do anything like a GoPro or helicopters or any modern te technology that way. I used the modern technology uh, uh, with the horses riding. Uh, I used the, um, the, um, the um, camera car. We, we put special wheels on it and we chased the horses and we rise them so it felt like a helicopter because, you know, of course, that would take you out of it. But I, I wanted the energy. So yeah. I left it a little shaky so you felt that. Uh, I, w I was very specific about the, uh, uh, the lighting with Morrow, a DP. Uh, when Denzel walks into the church, he's in the light. As soon as he steps on the steps, he goes into the dark. Uh, that was intentional. And if you watch the film again with, with Ethan, when he's going to leave, he walks down the steps, comes into the light, and then he steps back into the dark. He's half lit, half dark. And then he leaves, and he's all dark. Right? So the idea was playing with the character, you know, just for, for, for cinema. Chiaroscuro? Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, Light and Shadow. Uh, I was playing around with that a lot. Uh, just, just, just to, and, and, then, and then the compositions were very important to always keep two, three shots, because they are a group. In the beginning, it was very specific to singles. And as they became groups, I started doing more two shots, three shots, compositions, things like that. And then, OK. OK. What were you going to ask me? Come on, this is good. Go ask me. Ask me. Ask me. OK, we, we are talking about style. And OK, let's talk about the soul. Because style is soul, but uh, Antoine, you can you can uh, you can uh, talk about Sundance, uh, Batch Cassidy, and Sundance Kid. Mm -hmm. You can talk about uh, George Roy Hill masterpiece mm -hmm. about the relationship, a strange kind of relationship. I saw a wonderful gay gay relationship inside your wonderful movie. Mm -hmm. Can you say about it? Because you talked in the press conference about a friendship, a mm -hmm. male friendship. Mm -hmm. I saw a love. Mm -hmm. Can you say about it? What can you I'll, say? Here's what I'll say. Everything I did in a movie with my actors, we never wanted to say, we wanted you to interpret. Okay. It was intentional. We didn't talk about color, we didn't talk about sexuality or anything. It was just there. And because that's the beauty. You interpret how you want. But, it's, but things are there. There's things there. And I'll say that. <laughs> okay. Great, man. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks, Great movie. All right, thank you thank so much. You. I thank appreciate you. it. Thanks for the questions, man.